Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 7. In this tutorial we're going to add in a font, we're going to add in a score UI and we're also going to deal with the sequence a little bit with our buttons to make sure we can't double click things. Don't forget, click subscribe button, click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So you can see I have this open here, it's just a window that has a font in it. Uh, I'm just going to drag and drop this font, much like we did with the background, into Unity. Now I'm not going to distribute this font, you can head to Google and look for any font at all, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm using this one for illustrative purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extra folder specifically for fonts. So let's go to our assets, right click, create, folder, and just call it fonts. And I'm going to drag and drop that font into its correct folder. Now to apply fonts to different things within Unity is actually very, very easy indeed. Let's go to our question text and where it's got font here next to Arial, let's change that to whatever font we've just brought in. You can do it with the buttons if you want to. Again, it's completely up to you how you want to do it, but it's just a case of going to each of the texts and you can select each of them one by one and then set the font all together. So if we press play now, there we go. We can see that the font has changed. It's as easy as that to change it within Unity. So one of the main things that I want to deal with is the ability to stop different things happening. So you can see that we're able to click different answers there when realistically we shouldn't be able to at all. So you'll notice here the button does have a tick and B does indeed have a tick but if we untick it nothing actually happens here so we can use that to our advantage and all we're doing with that is turning off a component. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to modify our script a bit more to say once we've selected an answer disable all the other buttons to stop it doing whatever else and then obviously when we get to the next question we can re-enable them. So again, it all comes down to sequencing. So let's go to our script for the answer buttons. And we need to add in the four buttons as variables. So public game object answer A. And we can copy that. And we can do for B, C, and D. And obviously just change those names B, C, and D. And it doesn't matter too much if they do have the same name as a variable in a different script. Uh, because this script is only rel relative to itself, you don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, but what we do need to add is the namespace at the top to say we are going to be using some UI elements. So using unity engine.ui semicolon. And regardless of whatever we're doing here, we need to think that we do need to change each of these buttons whenever they are pressed. And rather than place it inside any of these, so because we don't want to duplicate it, we can place the same code just once in each method rather than once inside each if and else section. So after we've selected our answer, underneath we then need to put answer a dot get component in spiky brackets button open close bracket dot enabled equals false with the semicolon at the end so all we've done there is we're saying answer a where is your button component and when it finds it it disables it so we put enabled equals false which means we disable it we need to do that once again for b c and d so that's for B, that's for C, and that's for D. And let's change that to B, C, and D. And we can also place those at the end of each of the other methods. Now, once again, the reason I'm doing this is so as you can see the genuine flow of what each button is doing. There are multiple different ways that you can multiple, do multiple different things in Unity. This is just a nice, quick, simple way of showing, well, that's the flow of it. That's everything that answer A does. So let's see if it works. So 
Let's save it. Let's head back into Unity. And again, because we've added more variables, we do need to go to master control and make sure that button A is there, button B, C, and D. So if we press play now, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck a woodchuck could chuck wood? Lots and lots. Well, we've got that right. It now means that we can no longer select any of the other answers. We can't even double click the correct answer. Now that does come in handy when we're creating that score method as well, because we don't want to be able to click the same one over and over and magically get a million score. But let's just make sure that none and nothing else works. Let's check on C as well. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure D is going to work as well. Yeah, awesome. So the idea of what we're going to do here is once we have selected an answer, we want to be able to um, set up a system which generates the next question. And that's going to come pretty soon. I think once we have multiple questions that we can generate, things are going to start looking fairly interesting. And I can't wait to actually get a little bit further in this series because it's really cool how all this turns out. So let's now put some UI in for our current score and what will be our high score. Because obviously we want to have a high score that we want to save. So let's go to game object. Let's go UI and let's have, um, what can we use? Let's have a panel at the top of the screen. So when we put that panel in, you'll notice it covers the entire screen. So we can use the rec tool just to kind of manipulate it a little bit more. Uh, let's place it in a, roughly in the middle at the top somewhere. Round about there. I think that's okay. And I'm going to change the coloring to a lot darker, just so as it gives it a bit more something to it, because I want to have white text on there. I might change the alpha as well, but it's entirely up to you how you want to display this bit of your game. So this panel is going to contain the score and high score. So let's add in two new text boxes for that. So right click UI and let's go to text. And this is going to be our score. So let's have, I have it in caps, I think. So score and obviously by default, by start, it's going to start with zero. Uh, let's change the font to the one we brought in in this tutorial and let's change it to white and let's move it to the edge round about there and about there and probably increase the font. There we go. So next thing we're going to do is rename that to current score. And I'm going to hold control and press D to duplicate and change that to high score. And I'm going to move this over to the other side. And I'm just going to call this best like so. So that's all set up ready for us, but we do need to set the anchoring as well. Remember anchoring is important. So this up here, I want to change the panel to be, uh, let's have it stretched at the top rather than stretch the entire screen. Let's have the current score anchored in the top. In fact, let's have it middle right and let's have the high score in middle left. So no matter what size the screen is going to end up, you'll always have those lines of text relative to the rest of the game. So if we press play, it should look fairly decent. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Uh, one thing that has been bugging me just a little bit is I think I want to increase the brightness on that. Not too much though. That's, that's a bit too much. Uh, let's see how that looks now. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So up until this point, we pretty much have the functionality all in place. Um, the only real things we need to do is to create the score save the score and generate questions. There are obviously a couple of other things that we need to do in the meantime, um, just to kind of make it a little bit more interactive. And one of those things is sounds and music. So 
next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some background music and we're going to work in some sound effects as well. So that is going to involve a little bit more programming because we need the buttons to function uh, with a sound as well. So yeah, that's all coming in the next tutorial. And then after that, we're really going to start going ahead with the coding to make this an awesome little app. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.